right now, we declare this as holy ground. Yes, Father. Sanctified, set apart, consecrated to you. Lord, we ask you to come in a very special way this morning. Cause our eyes, our hearts, our intent to be fully focused on you, Lord. Every principality, every power, every dynamic um, entity that would seek to usurp, to uh, oppose your word this morning, Father, we bind in Jesus' precious name. We do this for your glory and the extension of your kingdom. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, uh, James and I really want to be able to tag preach, and we want to talk about healing. Um, really important, because Jesus, right from the outset, when he called 12 disciples with him, he commissioned them straight away. Not after three and a half years training, he sent them out straight away. And what he did, he said, guys, I want you to go and heal people. Um, preach the kingdom, uh, set people free of demons, uh, cause the people with leprosy to be whole again, and raise people from the dead. You know, what an amazing challenge that was. And then not, not only was it just the 12, it was 72. And Jesus underscored exactly the same thing. Heal the sick, free people of demons, raise the dead. He said, the harvest, the harvest is so plentiful. Uh, get out there, guys, and do what I've asked you to do. So just picking up on that uh, word in Matthew uh, 10, verse 8. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. You know, when we talk about healing, we're not just talking about physical healing because people have got emotional scars. They need to be healed emotionally. Um, they've got mental uh, conditions. Um, they need to be set free. They need to be restored. And we've also got spiritually abused people that have been traumatized that need the touch of God to bring restoration to them. Amen. Well, I had the privilege of uh, taking a team of... Uh, it was going to be nine people who invited themselves. I didn't ask them to come with me. They asked to come with me. Um, two people were turned back at the border because their visas were cancelled. Um, I won't go into that this morning, but the thing is we had seven people that did basically two and a half um, weeks solid ministry. And from word one to the last word we spoke, basically God just showed up and showed off with healings and miracles, signs and wonders. So many people got saved. Um, but really, really significant. And, and what I was sensing in the whole thing, it was like the Lord was actually increasing the wave of healing. Now, through church history, we've had healing touched generation. God has done amazing things through the generation. But it was like the, the wave of healing was actually starting to amplify, get steeper and, and, and broader. There was so much more thrust with that. And I thought, man, this is powerful. You know, we've got a privileged hour that we're actually in. And the Lord brought me back to Ezekiel, you know, the river coming from the temple and the water was only up to the ankles. And he said, go deeper, go deeper. It was up to the knees and go deeper. It was up to the loins and it was, you know, getting, you know, over their head. And it's like the Lord is saying, I want my church to step into the river of healing yeah. and go from what you've experienced, which has been comfortable and like wading through the water, which is nice, but I want you to go deeper. Don't stop at the knees. Keep on going, going. Because there's an appointment for this, the churches globally to step in to this generation to change things for so many people. We had people from uh, my team from uh, Papua New Guinea, from Indonesia, um, from um, Australia, from Samoa, and some crazy Kiwis. But I tell you what, this was a united team that just changed so much for so many people. My primary reason was to go and, and celebrate basically a 20-year ministry in one of our locations there. And uh, literally thousands of people have been uh, brought to the Lord through this ministry. Um, we've seen healings, miracles. Every day is a miracle as far as provision is concerned. Um, it was a great celebration. And some people even caught on camera angels in the sky as um, some of our buildings were being commissioned. I get a bit emotional when I see it because... Last year, I prayed for God to dispatch more angels to stand sentinels over the ministry. And people are physically sensing it and seeing that take place now. Well, when we talk about the gift of healing, it's really good to see what the Apostle Paul says, because he talks about in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, he talks about um, the Holy Spirit being empowered on, on his people. And all these gifts given to the church, and I'll read it very, very quickly. So if I speak quickly, I expect you to listen quickly. <laughs> To one is given through the gift of the Spirit a gift of wisdom, and to another gift of knowledge, and which means by the means of the same Spirit, and to another the gift of faith, and to another the gifts of healing by, by the Spirit, another miraculous powers, another prophecy, another uh, distinguishing of spirits, and to another 
speaking in different tongues and to another interpretation of those tongues. So when we look at this, there's actually nine gifts that the Apostle Paul talks about. Uh, there were gift of knowing, gift of um, revelation, uh, that's prophecy, uh, words of knowledge, um, and wisdom. And then there's another group which is talking about speaking gifts or utterance gifts, which are tongues, interpretation, oh, sorry, prophecy again. Um, but, but really, in the middle of this whole thing, there's the gift of power, and that's the gift of healing, the gift of faith, and the gift of miracles. And I'm just sensing that there's this blend of faith, miracles, and healings where the church is starting to step into and into like, a, like never before. We've had it before, but it's like a new substance of that. Um, and so you know, I can talk about um, so many uh, instances where God has delivered people and healed people over the last two or three weeks. Um, but it starts with us stepping into situations, you know, because people are here sick today and listening online that are sick, and we will know God that will heal and touch their, and restore their bodies. But I think the challenge is to us as a church, come on guys, I want you to pick up healing and step into it intentionally. Um, and I know um, sometimes I'm thinking, what is the situation I'm going into? Like we were in a one house church full of about 45 people, and I'm starting to get all this tingling in my hands, and this heat was in my hands. And I know from experience that's actually uh, an anointing for healing for sick people. Sometimes actually oil comes into my palm of my hands and I know you're really serious about this, Lord. Do something with it. And so this one, one uh, young lady, um, she was before me with a mess of people and I knew that God really wanted to touch and restore her. And um, I knew it. she had woman problems and it's pretty difficult asking those questions online. Uh, she actually had breast cancer. And so I got Richard to stand behind her and um, she put her hands on her, on her chest, on her breasts, and we just prayed for her. And God just sovereignly imparted something um, that was so, so surreal. And then there's another lady next to her, and she came along. And I knew that she had uh, really bad heart conditions, um, physically, but she also had broken hearts. So there was like a physical and, a, and an emotional um, breakage that she actually had. And this intense, tingling heat, bang. You know, God did something. Um, beyond the norm. You know, naturally doctors can do things, but God sovereignly can do so much more. And so we actually realized the woman before and her, part of the same family, they were sisters, and there was generational curses. And so um, we just prayed for that, and all of a sudden all these demons just started to come out of these two young girls. Um, it wasn't any commanding, um, there was just a exit stage left for these demons. They couldn't stand this place where the Lord was, 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 was ministering. But it was so natural, it wasn't um, orchestrated, it wasn't connived, it wasn't heavy duty. It was just the Holy Spirit was there, um, faith was there, something happened. So we saw generational occultic spirits broken off so many people. I don't know how many um, people, uh, dozens and dozens of people and numerous demons just coming out of people. Um, but we just had to step into a new zone. And what I'm sensing even, even globally, there's a contention between good and evil, light and darkness, but the church is stepping into a place of um, we're on the winning side, we've got to do something about it, we can't uh, accept the status quo, we've got to push back now. And, and, and so what, ministering with Richard, um, now Richard's down at uh, Gore and uh, Dunedin this weekend, but um, what he does, he just goes and loves on people, he, he goes and embraces people and just loves on people and demons hate this and all, all of a sudden <laughs> and all this vomiting is going on and all these things are getting ejected out of people's lives and it's not like um, screaming and ranting and raving and foaming at the mouth it's all been so easy I've been a Christian for 50 odd years and I've never seen a period of time where so many demons have come out of people so quickly with so little effort uh, sometimes it's so intentional and you've got to be there for ages and ages, speaking in tongues, doing everything within your own capacity to be able to release people. But all of a sudden it was like... Awesome. But this didn't happen just in one location. Wherever we went, that was um, an expression of what was actually happening. Uh, and, and so I, asked, I was asked to go to um, a place last year, miles away from anywhere, and because um, I knew that I, could, I could fly there, but then I'd have about a five, six hour drive to get there along roads that were, 
you just don't want to be on those roads sort of thing um, because you know you know the insurance companies don't want to back the cars or you know life insurance people don't want to have you on board there but the thing is we got there and they wanted me to speak they wanted me to speak initially on um, the explosive power of the Holy Spirit and we had five sessions to do this um, and so we got to the gift of healing and um, you can't just talk about the gift of healing and not actually have people get saved um, and so just explaining really the gift of healing isn't like a just a gift, like a gift, it's singular. It's, it's actually plural. It means like, for example, um, J James might have the gift of healing in people with got arthritic conditions, you know, and, and he prays for lots of people with asthmas and all sorts of things, but somehow with arthritic conditions, you know, the, the score list is actually much higher because of arthritic conditions. Uh, someone I know who's got really good faith for uh, people with um, flat, flat foot, you know, why flat foot? I don't know, but he prays for all these people with flat foots and all of a sudden they've got like um, normal, you know, arches of the foot. And, the, and someone else is praying for people with, um, you know, ch chewing their fingers. They just chew their fingers all the time, all the fingernails. Are <laughs> Somehow the gift of healing and all of a sudden it stopped, you know. But the, this gift is, um, you know, singular, but it's, I think we can also use it plurally. And so when I'm ministering with people, somehow... Um, Pregnant people or people who can't get pregnant, stillborn people, pray for them and there's just a wake of people that get pregnant. Um, people with cardiac and respiratory um, disorders, um, there's a big, um, you know, statistic, you know, graph with those people in my life. And I'll pray for other people, but that's the gift of healing that God wants to start us to get into. And I don't know the situation you were in, uh, but, you know, you're going to be confronted. And I think the Lord's saying, come on. You can speak into those lives. You can bind the things that are binding these people and see them liberated in Jesus' wonderful name. Um, and as part of this faith component, because we've got healing, words of knowledge and faith, it's just like a, a blend of these three gifts coming together and it rises up. And I think the Lord is inflating our faith capacity to be able to step into some amazing situations. A lot of it's going to take place in a church environment or a home environment where we're gathering and we're focusing on Jesus. But I think a lot of it's going to start to take place in the marketplace more and more and more and more. And so healing will take place. Um, I got Richard to speak on a Sunday service, uh, this, this church that we had to do five, um, five sessions in. I got Richard to do the Sunday morning one. And I'd never seen um, a message like uh, this before with love of God. But as he spoke the love of God... God started to heal and restore people and we had this amazing altar call and there were hundreds of people there and all these demons coming out and it wasn't like hard work, it was just so easy. Um, you know, Peter walked past people with a shadow of his presence touching people that couldn't walk and all of a sudden, but these demons were just coming out of people really, really quickly. And he basically said, you know, um, you know blessings trump curses. You know, the world is full of curses. The blessing of our God will trump curses any day and he says I declare healing I declare healing you know not Jesus declared healing over you I declare healing I bless you I bless you and all these things started to happen um, and through language it's pretty hard to get feedback uh, on people but people were decked and on the floor overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit but the thing is um, we got through the morning services pretty exhausted and then they said okay we've organized lunch for you Oh, that's nice. And so um, they put us in a car and they took us to a local um, Thai cafe in this large community. And Richard said to the owner, I really like this food. You know, he doesn't really like too much noodles and rice and all that sort of stuff. He likes T-bone steaks. But he said to this owner, hey, Kay, I just really want to thank you for what you've done today. I, I want to bless you. Can I bless you? And the guy says, oh, OK. And so he just comes up and he puts his hands on his shoulder and said, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I'm thankful that you are here. You've, you've done an amazing job this morning and we just want to bless you afresh. And then someone said, do you want to become a Christian? And the guy says, yeah. <laughs> so I've got the pastor uh, to actually pray for this young man. And, and like, like you see, he was crying. It was like Niagara Falls was taking place. Jesus was coming into his heart. You know, God had actually prepared this man, I believe. But there was an encounter yes. in the community, in this guy's shop. And then two of his staff members were saying, whoa, can we have what he's got? And so he prayed for them. Uh, so three people in the, in the shop. Unexpected, but so primed by the Holy Spirit. You know, I think the greatest healing we can ever have is our salvation. You know, if we're on a pathway to hell, 
um, and destruction where it's all corrupt and going downhill. The greatest healing we can actually have is our soul and our spirit, you know, set apart for the kingdom. And so God will send you to places. It might be um, the neighbour next door, it might be at school, in the staff room. Expect God to actually work in and through you. Well, we've, I finished the, the night service um, there, and I'm so pleased because I knew I had a 14-hour drive to this other location because our flight was, was cancelled. And I'm thinking, it's 8.30, good, we can get into this uh, van, or, or, or actually 11 of us, and we can drive there. And they said, oh, Pastor Phil, you've got one more meeting. And I'm thinking, you told me five. Oh, no, there's one more. What am I supposed to do? Oh, you've got to prophesy over everyone. And they had about 250 <laughs> people there. And so I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be good. One big prophesy, for, prophet, prophetic word for over everybody. And they said, no, 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 you've got it. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, God was on the move. And we had a team of people, and together there was uh, a synergy taking place. And I discovered working with someone like Richard, very, very powerful. And um, why did Jesus send people out two by two? Yeah, right. It's for a reason. Yeah. And there was, um, there was strength in the spirit. With, and with a team of seven of us, there was actually even something more uh, resilient and powerful. Well, we went up to this um, a, a friend of mine, because he asked me to mentor him a number of years ago, got there, and he'd organised all these people for us to meet, which we didn't know he'd planned for. And so, uh, travelling overnight, no sleep after a heavy duty weekend, straight into another day of just wall-to-wall -wall people, um, meeting key men of peace in the city. And they said, can you pray for the mayor? Um, Okay, you know, so we squeeze this in and we went to pray for this man. And my question is this morning, we can pray for individuals, but can we pray for healing for a city? Can we take it to another whole level? And I'm thinking, why through all these years of traveling have cities opened up to me? Why have key leaders, governors and mayors uh, found out that I'm in town without me telling them and they've asked me to come and pray for them? And so we prayed for this uh, mayor and his wife and um, set apart that we're seeing restoration take place in that city. Um, thousands and thousands of people are actually there. And I just want to see God move more powerfully, uh, yes. not only in lives of individuals, but whole communities, whole cities and whole nations. But as I look at the whole area of healing, I realise faith and healing have to come together. Um, this year in March, I was in a place um, in, called Sumba Island, and literally meeting after meeting after meeting. But all these people were there, but they were faithless. And so we were praying for all these people, and it was like playing for blocks of ice. It was like, you know, you could have prayed for dead people in the tombs, and they would have had more life, I think. But there, there was just emptiness. And the Lord was showing me, that, showing me the fact that these people were hopeless. They weren't faith-filled. And so we were praying for people, expecting God to heal them, but that actually come from a situation where all this uh, witchcraft had actually bound them for generation after generation after generation. Then Catholicism came in and people were actually taught to actually come to a priest for healing and not to Jesus. They were taught to come and pray for a relic and not Jesus for their healing or Mary, the mother of Jesus, for healing, not Jesus himself. And all these people were coming and expecting the man of God to actually pray for people. And it was like no faith at all. But then I realised, no, 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 we've got to actually inject faith into their situation, refocus them so they can actually see moving from hopelessness to faithful people. And that's the key to release people, you know, having faith to receive. You know, Richard has now released over 17, or 17 million books are in print, uh, just one of his books, around, um, uh, what he said, 47 different um, Language is now translated, now working into Papua New Guinea as well, and Samoa and a couple of other languages. But what do you do if you can't actually read a book? Because a lot of people are illiterate. And this is what I discovered where I was the last two or three weeks. Older generations can't read. The younger generations often don't go to school because there's just too many people and not enough schools or not, not enough teachers. And so when you can't read, like you're blind, physically blind, we had the situation where this person reported in saying, hey, I never could read, but I was listening to the audio message of Richard. All of a sudden, started to see. Once was blind, but now I see. Wow. You know, God is moving sovereignly. Amen. There was another man who couldn't walk. You know, he'd read the book and he started to declare blessing on his life. And 
You see it up there. You know, he, he got up, fragile, started to learn to walk, then he started to walk stronger and stride, and obviously his wheelchair is only a testimony now. But the thing is, if we've got faith in our heart, God can change anything. He can change your circumstance, your family situ situation. He can change so much. We just have to lift our expectation. And, and even working with Richard this last week, I'm thinking, how can I help Richard's ministry go to another level? So I took him to a uh, radio studio with, um, I think it was 55 radio stations, broadcasting from this one, one um, studio through the nation. Um, within one week, over 2,500 people had heard Richard's message on the power of blessing. Um, and then they were saying, can you come back and do some more, more recording? And so we're looking now at actually doing... A, th th this actually wasn't just um, 2,500 people listening. This is just the YouTube clip, you know, because this is all live, live streamed. And so straight, straight away they're saying, can you come in and actually do YouTube uh, clips to train our people? But thousands of other people are actually listening to this message. And so we're actually in the process of organising more and more books to be printed and get them distributed. But we want to work smart, not hard. You know, I'm tired of working hard. There's got to be better ways to be able to crack, crack them crack the code as it were and so we can get these books out to people freely of charge you know via media uh, very very easily you know through radio um, we're getting people to actually translate and actually um, have this book in an audio format now so people can actually hear it as they're a taxi driver waiting for the next um, customer they can actually listen to the, this powerful message people are li lying at home sick they cannot come to church they can hear this message very, very clearly that Jesus is healing today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And he will restore that situation. You know, the live streaming that was going on during these meetings, um, what, one of the churches we're in um, has grown from um, 500 people to 1,200 people since COVID. More and more people are actually associated with the church now outside the church than that can come to the church because the church is crammed full on Sunday. And so they're getting all these people through live streaming and YouTube clips that are actually listening to these messages. And even this morning, you know, people live streaming churches around the world. Even this morning in our church, people are listening. You know, you might have sickness, you might have disease, you might have broken heart, broken lives. You may know that there's dynamic um, oppression or influence on your life. Those things can be released immediately in Jesus' name. We don't have to contend, we just have to press on. And my challenge to us as a church again, healing is for us all. Not just to receive, but to actually pass on to people. The Spirit of God is saying, step into the river of healing. Come on guys, you've been up to the ankles and it's been nice and it's been good. Can you go deeper? Can you go to your knees? Can you go to your loins? Can you get swept away with this? We can see miracles, signs and wonders take place. Not just occasionally, but day to day end to end, back to back, because we serve a mighty God who has conquered death, disease and sickness. Uh, yes, there's a battle, but we are on the winning side and we serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Amen.